Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 nautically themed games. So I am a big fan of the whole um, nautical theme on games. I, I love games that have to do with like Age of Sail stuff as well as uh, just general seagoing and, and naval battle and, and things like that. Uh, nautical usually means things that have to do with navigation in the ocean or sailing or seamanship, things like that. So I, I did have a little bit of a tough time with this list because there were a lot of games where I was like, is this really nautically themed? <laughs> And it was a little rough, because like sometimes I'd be like, well, it's about the ocean, or it's about water, but it's not really nautical, or or it's about boating, but it's about like river boating, or something like that, and, and it would be a little uh, uh, difficult. Um, I do have one game on my list that I was still a little iffy on, but it was specifically about sailing, so I, I kept it. Um... So yeah, so but I think generally speaking, this is a pretty good list that I, if I saw someone else do, would not have any objections to any of these games not being nautically themed. Uh, so yeah, so without any further ado, we're going to get into it. I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite nautically themed games. Uh, so yeah, so let's get to my number 10. Number 10. Okay, so my number 10 nautically themed game is Ship Shape. So Ship Shape is a great little game. Uh, I picked it up a couple of years ago at a game convention. Uh, I am a huge fan of this game. This is a game that I have never had go over poorly. Everyone who's played it has really enjoyed it. Uh, now, the, the theme is definitely nautical, though the game itself is really just more of a puzzly sort of game, which is really kind of interesting, and I like it a lot. So what, what I mean when I'm saying that is that the, the theme is about shipping cargo and trying to get it into port. But the actual game is this puzzly thing where you have these, these tiles that you, can, you, you draft, you take turns getting them, you, you bid on whether you're going to be the first or second or third person to be drafting a tile. And the tiles have holes in them, and they have spaces that have the cargo on them. And then you're going to turn them whichever way you want and put them down in your cargo hold. And only the things that when you look down at your cargo hold, you can see uh, looking up at you, only the symbols there will actually matter. And uh, and it matters for kind of like set collecting um, in a set collecting sort of way because there's things that get you money and there's other things that... Um, possibly are contraband and could lose you money if you have the most of them and so that like there's a kind of like a press your luck element where you want to have a lot of it and get a lot of money for it but if you have too much if you have the most you lose money um and it's really neat and you want to kind of you go through a few rounds of it and you want to be the person with the most coin at the end of the game uh this is a really fun game and uh, and definitely the theme while the game itself may not play into the actual sailing the theme definitely is nautical and the cover of the box looks very nautical uh and that's why i went with ship shape as my number 10 favorite nautically themed game number nine my number nine favorite nautically themed game uh is a really cool kind of team game this game plays specifically best at four players so you can do it two on two it is Sonar. So Sonar is this great game where you and your partner are operating a submarine and your opponents are also operating a submarine. And you're going to be moving around the map, uh, though you don't know where each other are. So one player on the team is going to be the captain of the sub. And they direct where you're moving and they build up abilities and keep track of building up abilities to be able to do things like doing sonar pings, etc. While the other player is keeping track of the directions that your opponent is moving. And they they, they do it on a transparency because they, they move it around and compare it to the area of water they could be in, uh, including the islands that of course they can't go on. And they try to figure out possible places they could be. And one of the other actions you're building up in addition to sonar pings, there's an action you're building up. Uh, that can allow you to fire torpedoes. And if you can wind up hitting your opponent's sub twice with torpedoes, you sink them. Uh, the object of the game is to hit your opponent's sub twice before they hit yours. There's also an action that allows you to do silent moving where you can move in one direction, but you don't have to announce it. Because normally, and that's the way the radar operator keeps track of, of the movement on the transparency by drawing on it with a dry erase marker, is that you have to say south, east, 
north, whatever direction it is, and and they are gonna they're gonna draw because it's all it's a grid with dotted lines. This is this is a really awesome, really fun game. Uh, it's got a bit of deduction. It's kind of a modern replacement to Battleship because uh, there's no real deduction in Battleship. It's just like process of elimination. Whereas in this, it's you're you're giving a bit. You have to give a bit of information almost every turn to your opponent, except if you do silent running. And when you're giving that little bit of information, it helps them to start to figure out where you are and that is really awesome and that's why sonar is my number nine favorite nautically themed game number eight my number eight favorite nautically themed game is the only one that i thought was a little bit of a stretch and that is sea of clouds now it does reference the sea and it is about sailing but it is the sea of clouds it's about flying ships uh, but it still really feels very nautical to me. You're, you're a crew of sky pirates sailing amongst this fantasy land through the clouds. Uh, and it, you do a bit of this press your luck where there's bits of loot, bits of treasure you're looking for. And, and they're placed face down. It starts with one card in each of three spaces. And you look at the first one and you're like, do I want to take this or do I want to push my luck and see what the next one is? And if you don't take it, you put it back face down and you add another card to it. And then you look at the next one. You can do the same thing. You can keep adding cards to them until there are three. After that, you start add, put, adding gold coins to it. If you don't want any of the three cards, you can take the random top card from the deck. And you're trying to do set collecting of treasure. And you're trying to get the best treasure. And then periodically, there's boarding actions where your crew and the other crew will fight. And you can steal some treasure from the other pirate crews. This game is a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable. I've really liked it since the first time I've played it. And it's a nice little small footprint game. This is one I have brought to the coffee house to play uh during times when such things were a little easier to do uh and that's why sea of clouds makes it down to my number eight favorite nautically themed game number seven my number seven favorite nautically themed game is the first of a couple of abstract strategy games that are on here, but that have a nautical theme to them. And this one is Raft and Scupper. Now, I really like Raft and Scupper. This is one um, that I, I, I knew I was going to like even before I played it. I had originally see, seen some people post about it on a Facebook group I'm in uh, that is devoted to abstract games. I'm a big fan of abstract games. If you watch my channel, you know that. I play a lot of abstracts. And I, I saw some posts and I was like, this game looks cool. And I immediately contacted the designer and was like, hey, I'd never heard of this game until somebody posted some pictures of it on Facebook. Um, if you're ever looking for people to review it, let me know. This game looks totally up my alley. And he did. He wound up sending me a copy. And I loved it. I had a blast with it. Alex really enjoyed it, too. Uh, it's a game where you have a, uh, a couple of little uh, pirate meeples that you move around on the board as you slowly uh, scupper the, the board are, are made of ships. You're removing ships and trying to to make certain formations of the tiles on the board. You want to have either all of the, um, the shape symbol on the tile or the color either light or dark grouped together uh so one one player is is uh the, the the two shapes are round and square and the two colors are light and dark each player represents one shape and one color and they want to have all of one or the other that are left on the board group together and they have abilities to move tiles around also destroy tiles um rearrange things etc and all in an effort to, one, not allow your opponent to group either their shape or color all together while allowing you to group either all of your shape or color together. This game is a ton of fun. Uh, if you want to see more on how to play it, I did do a full review and tutorial of this one. And it's great. It's super fun. And it has this super uh, tongue-in-cheek piratey kind of feel to it. And that's why Raft and Scupper made it all the way down to my number seven, seven favorite nautically themed game number six my number six favorite nautically themed game is another one that felt again like a slight stretch because it's not actually the ocean but it's again it's this kind of fantasy sky ship uh on a on a gas giant planet sailing around the planet hunting monsters sort of game it really felt like Moby Dick on an alien world in a sci-fi fantasy kind of world. This game is a lot of fun. I first uh, discovered it this year, actually. This is one of the newer games on this list. Let me just take a look. I think it might be the newest game on this list. 
Uh, but Windward, I fully discovered it at Gen Con. I saw them selling it. It looked like a lot of fun. And then I, went, I got to try it. And after I tried it, I bought it. Uh, really, really enjoy this one. It's, it's, you're, you're sailing around hunting monsters, these giant sky monsters, to then refine them for their, their materials that then you are selling at market when you get back to the station. Uh, really, really cool. The mechanics are really fun. My favorite thing about it is they actually worked in this really interesting mechanic that has to do with wind direction where you're only allowed to move a certain number of spaces but if you're moving in the, in the direction of wind direction you get to move those spaces for free because you catch the wind and you get a boost and that is really awesome i like this one a lot and that is windward and that is why i made it all the way down to my number six favorite nautically themed game number five my number five favorite nautically themed game is the other of the two abstract strategy games that's on my list. I referenced it a little bit ago when I was talking about Raft and Scupper. This one is Nexus Man of War. Now, uh, there's a couple versions of Nexus now because it is an abstract game. They have different themes on it. But the first thing they'd put onto it was Age of Sail Battles. And it was uh, Man of War. And you can still buy this version of it with the 3D printed ships and the 3D printed boards. Which actually I think is really awesome. I really like this version of it. Uh, I think it looks really cool on the tabletop. It has a great table presence. Um, but it is, it is in fact, an abstract game about gaining and controlling territory in your opponent's board. You have the two boards touching each other, and you, have, you can move your pieces, and you can capture enemy pieces. But capturing is not how you win. What you want to do is move your pieces onto your opponent's board so that you can control the space that you're on, as well as all the spaces in a direct line back to your own board, as well as all spaces in a direct line uninterrupted to any other pieces you have on your opponent's board. So you want to get a couple of pieces on their board to connect lines between them, and back to your board to control enough space to win the game of Nexus. This game is tons of fun. Absolutely love it. And I love the nautically themed pieces on the Nexus Man of War version. Again, I did a full review and tutorial of this one if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, that's why I made it all the way down to my number five favorite nautically themed game. Number four. My number four favorite nautically themed game, which I did see they, they did a Kickstarter to do a new edition of recently, uh, but I saw my old edition from back in the day and I love it, is Island Siege. This is uh, a great game where you, you collect these, these um, uh, cubes to put on you, these little forts that you make, but then you have to send out your ships to attack your opponent's forts and, and, and try to uh, destroy their cubes so that you can you can uh, steal their, their loot. It, uh, this game is a lot of fun. It feels like battling over the various islands in the Caribbean during the colonial days, uh, which is definitely the theme it, they were going for, and it really does feel like it. It captures that whole feel. Uh, Island Siege is a lot of fun. You have a lot of cards based on, on ships and sailing and crews and such, and it's very nautically themed. Um, it's, a lot of, it's, it's a lot of dice chucking. It's a lot of uh, cube placement and cube collecting. Uh, and it's just a really, really fun game. This is this is one that I just I love to play heads up. Lynn and I will play it, and it's just a blast. And it, it's it's a fairly simple game compared to a lot of the other games on the top half of this list, which are usually generally more advanced. But it's just super fun. It again, it's a dice chucker. It's not super involved, but it is super enjoyable. And that's why I made it all the way down to my number four favorite game on my list of the top 10 nautically themed games. Number three. My number three favorite nautically themed game is one from Forbidden Games and Glenn Drover. Uh, Glenn is a fantastic designer. And this one is Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. So this is one that gets overlooked a lot in uh, Forbidden Games line of games because there are some other games that have kind of outsold it like Raccoon Tycoon and Lizard Wizard. But this is a game that is, is in my opinion, kind of criminally overlooked. It shouldn't be so overlooked because it's super good. This game is a ton of fun and you're playing... Uh, you're playing pirate crews that are sailing around and attacking merchant ships and stealing cubes and you're collecting the cubes to trade them in for treasure tiles that get you the points uh, and you want to try to like be, be the first one to make it to the, the final port which then triggers the end of the game and then whoever's got the most points wins. 
This game is super fun. I love going to port, picking up new crew members, which has a little bit of a deck building mechanic to it. Uh, I love collecting the cubes and trading them in for the, the various kinds of treasures you can get. And I love the board. This is another one that's just very beautiful. Looks really great out on the tabletop. Um, all of these come together to why I really love this game and why Extraordinary Adventures Pirates makes it all the way down to my number three favorite nautically themed games. I mean, three and up, these are these are the creme de la creme here. So yeah, this one is absolutely phenomenal and I highly recommend it if you're into nautically or pirate themed games. Extraordinary Adventures Pirates, my number three. Number two. My number two favorite nautically themed game is a tiny little independent game. Again, another one even even worse than with uh, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates in regard to how criminally overlooked this game is. I think it, it's horrible how few people have tried this game because it was a tiny little like self-published release, but it's phenomenal. The designer did an absolutely awesome job in it, and I love it. And that is 1750 Britain versus France. This is a game where you are playing out the colonial wars between Britain and France in all different parts of the world and you can sail your troops around into the open ocean and then to the other areas of the world to move them to the different areas to fight over the different cards that are the different territories in North America, the Caribbean, uh, India and Africa fighting over trade routes to get you the most money. Uh, this game is tons of fun. It shows up on a lot of my lists because I love it and I love to sing its praises and I really wish more people uh, would check it out because I want to see this designer do more. Um, and that is 1750 Britain versus France, a game that allows you to simulate multiple wars across multiple theaters of the world through Age of Sail um, battle and maneuvering. And that's why it made it all the way down to my number two favorite Age of Sail game. And now it is time for number one. Now, my number one favorite Age of Sail game is probably going to be no surprise to anyone who's an avid viewer of my channel because I, I've talked about it so much. I've done so many videos on it. I've done multiple full game videos uh, that I've put up on the channel for it, and that is Sails of Glory. I absolutely adore Sails of Glory. I still play it. Um, this, this game is just so good, and... Even though I very rarely win it because Alex is so good at Sales of Glory and he kicks my butt at it pretty regularly. Uh, he's really good with his Spanish fleet. And even though I lose a lot, I love this game. It's so amazing. I love that it allows you to thoroughly simulate controlling the crews of your ships, controlling these Age of Sail ships as they do battle with these other Age of Sail ships. Um, it's, it's got a lot of really intelligently designed mechanics for maneuvering and firing and being able to cross the T and do extra damage from firing at the rear or the front of your enemy's ship. Um, really well done. Full-on simulation, tabletop miniature game, Sails of Glory. Absolutely adore this game. Anyone who's into Age of Sail gaming, uh, I would 100% recommend checking out Sails of Glory, which is, again, made to represent the Age of Sail Napoleonic War era sea battles though i do hear they announced recently they're going to be doing a new starter set for a new time period they're going to be doing the earlier time period to do the pirates of the caribbean time period and there will be pirate ships uh and it it, it sounds really awesome i can't wait especially since the rules are going to be completely compatible with the already existing line of ships it's just going to add a ton of new ships in that you can play back and forth uh between the different time periods and i cannot wait to check out uh, all the new content they come out with when they come out with their new starter set. So that's it. That That is my top 10 favorite nautically themed games. So are there any really awesome nautically themed games that are some of your favorites that maybe I haven't played that I missed that didn't make my list? Comment down below. Let me know what are your favorite nautically themed games. And if you enjoyed this top 10 list and you'd like to see me do more like it, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on. Could you not chew so loudly? Could you not chew so loudly? Yeah, you're chewing very loudly. The cameras are going to totally pick that up, you silly boy. I know. You should, oh, what's going on? Oh, we doing a puppy blooper? We haven't done a puppy blooper in a while. What's going on? Hi, what's going on? What you doing?
You were just being so loud. That's why I was telling you, don't be so loud. Don't be so loud. 